so this is the current situation. It's absolutely hammering it down. Just from opening the door a little bit, everything got soaked in the car. It's not looking particularly promising out there. Welcome back. So today's video is not going to be what I originally shot because it now makes no sense whatsoever. Also permanently pounded about how wonky my glasses are. So before the whole coronavirus thing kicked off, I went to photograph a bike race. I was going to do a video about doing it, but I couldn't shoot it in the way I was going to because the coronavirus hadn't started in this country, but there were starting to be sanctions put in place. But it was a long time before social distancing came in. So none of it really has any relevance anymore. But what I'm going to talk about instead is weather sealing and shooting in sort of adverse conditions. Now, specifically, we're going to be talking about weather sealing on the Canon 5D series. I've used the 5D Mark I, Mark II, Mark III and 5DS and 5DSR. I've never actually used a 5D Mark IV. It doesn't really fit into anything that I require, but they're all much of a muchness in that sense. So you've probably gone and read that they're partially weather sealed and you have no idea what that means. Well, I thought I would give the cameras a good thrashing. I originally decided to make some tents for them, but ended up not bothering. And I shot in the rain for two and a half hours. Now I had a carrier bag with me, which I sort of put the cameras in when I was waiting for the cyclists to come by. And I did a few little bits and pieces to them. Now I don't have the cameras with me today because everything's all over the shop due to lockdown. But let me show you what I do have. Now this is the 70D and it's actually one of the lenses I use. It's a weather sealed lens. Now it has a very similar layout, apart from the screen which flips out, which would be a nightmare in the rain. It has the dial here and the buttons here. What I did, I set my exposure I put tape, you could use electrical tape, gaff tape over all the slots, all the little gaps, and everything was fine. Now, my lenses worked fine, the focus and zooms all worked fine, they're still smooth now. I have shot with this lens before for eight hours in the rain without any protection, and it went a bit gritty on the focus ring, but that all sort of rectified itself after drying it in a bag of rice overnight. So, what's the point in all of this? Well, I guess the cameras are more robust than you expect. Now, I know a lot of his baby our cameras, and I particularly don't. You can see I've actually got paint and mud and all sorts on this one, actually. But they're pretty robust bits of kit. Now, if you do go and shoot in torrential rain, your camera might break. But if you have insurance that covers you for that, I would always go to get the shot and chance it on the insurance than I would miss the photograph. That's my personal opinion. And obviously, I'm a professional, so that's a slightly different sort of thing. But I will put my gear in absolute harm's way to get the shot. And if it dies, it dies. I've got backups. I'm in a fortunate position like that and I've got insurance. Now, if you don't have backups, you need to be more careful. I went to this job with three cameras. If one died, I still had two. If two dies, I still had one. So there was lots of mitigation there for things to go belly up. So here's what's coming with me. This is my old wedding photography bag. And uh, this is a lot of my old wedding photography kit. These are my 5D Mark II cameras in here. There's one here, there's one here. They're both identical. One has a grip, one doesn't. I don't know why. I thought they both had grips. I must have either broken or lost one. I've got my three speed lights here. I've got my three power packs here. 70 to 200, 35 prime. And on this camera here, this is my 17 to 40. So that's going to cover me. I could take more, but I'm by myself. I don't. You know, I don't want to be lugging around loads of kits. So that's pretty much going to be, I'll probably have the 17 to 40 or 17 to 35, can't remember what it is, on the smaller 5D without the grip, and the 70 to 200 on this, and maybe the 35 if it gets really dark and the flash doesn't look good. Um, but there we go, pretty simple kit, no weather sealing options, but I've just spotted some carrier bags down there, which I'm going to pick up and cut some holes in to hopefully make rain jackets of some sorts. But there we go, all set to go. I'm going to pack up and head off. I'm not taking any of my good kit. That all lives in my pedi case over there because I simply can't risk breaking it for a job where I'm getting paid like a hundred pounds. Um, I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it because I'm a massive cycling fan and the guy who asked me to do it was my driving instructor. So we also, he used to cycle with me years ago. Anyway, tangent time, let's go. So, you have to excuse the mess in my car. I've got my cameras down here. I've sadly got my wide lens now on a camera. But that means that I've got my two cameras set up. Setting wise, I'm at f5, 
640 ISO and 400th of a second. I need the 400th to get a little bit of motion freezing. There's still gonna be wheels blowing, I think, at that speed, but we'll soon find out. The F5 is just so I have a half decent chance of getting them in focus. There's only one working autofocus point on a 5D Mark II. So it's aim for the center, hope for the best, and make sure your depth of field is enough. I've got a speed light on my wide lens because I want to sort of pull them apart from the background a bit, darken the background, so I might end up dropping the aperture or shutter speed a little bit just to give it a bit of pop. I'm going to need a battery pack with that, so I'll put a Godox battery on it. And then I've put this GoPro on top of this. It might be useless, but it might show some interesting information. I don't know, we shall see. Now, in terms of making some sort of tent, I've got my Marks and Spencers middle-class shopping bags. I've got my decorating scissors and a trusty roll of ProGaff. So between these bits, I'm gonna build something to stop these cameras all ending up in the repair shop at the end of the week. I swim my car seat back a bit. Ooh, there we go. So I've got my mic over here because the rain's a little bit excessive at the moment. We're recording, we're recording. I am going to potentially move around the course as we go. I'm a bit anxious, I'm a new driver as well, so moving around on a bike race with that many cyclists, I don't want to kill a cyclist. That's like my worst nightmare is knocking a cyclist over. So I think what I'm gonna do is stay here for the first two laps, get my camera set up, make sure I've got the exposures right. I believe they're doing seven laps of the course. The finish line's about 500 meters behind me. And after that, I might follow the race for a little bit, do one lap of the circuit, find a good spot, maybe spend laps three and four there when they come past again, follow the race again, come back to my current position, park up and get ready for the finish, a couple of laps and doing this bit here. We'll see, hopefully I don't mess it up. It's not particularly high stress because I'm doing it for a friend, there's no real big financial incentive there, but at the same time, I don't wanna do a bad job because I'd be embarrassed, but there we go. Right, I'm gonna crack on because the time is, 9.50 and the race starts at 10, so they'll probably be here in 20 minutes and I need to be ready for that. So I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. Now in terms of shooting the race, I want to talk to you a little bit about this. It might not be of interest to you, but here we go. I took about 800 frames, which is an obscene amount of images for me. I only had one autofocus point on my camera. I did not have the right kit for the job. I own Canon 5D Mark IIs for this sort of work. They have one usable autofocus point. They don't focus particularly well. They shoot very slowly. But I did an okay job, I feel, with the kit I had. I don't think that getting better kit would have helped me much. A lot of photographing a bike race is understanding what's important. Knowing that you need to show, say, the breakaway with a chase group in the distance, so you can gauge how far ahead they are, making sure the person's cranks on the bike at the right angle when you photograph them. There's little things that make it look like a good image, which are nothing to do with the camera, but a lot to do with your knowledge. Now, as a professional food photographer, this is really true. It doesn't matter how technically good your image quality is. If you don't understand how the food should look, how to portray the food, knowing how to do a 20 light setup is completely pointless. And I think the take home from this day's shooting is that it's just so important to make sure that you understand your subject more so than your camera. It's better to have your camera in full auto mode and to get the correct image than it is to do it all manually and all like properly as it were, and to not get the right image. You should really be focusing on understanding and knowing your subject. The images I took, I'm pretty happy with. I delivered them the same day. It was, you know, it was a bit of fun for me. It was just, you know, a fun day out. I love cycling. My driving instructor offered me the gig. I was like, yeah, let's do it. So off we went and I did it. Good times for all. Now, from the images, I've selected a few here that you can see. You can see how much it was raining. You can see how important having that f5.6 sort of depth of field was as well. And the shots I got, I tried to shoot it in a way that when you viewed the album of say 120 images, which I think is what I delivered. Actually, no, I didn't. I delivered 300, scratched that completely. The 300 images, you can see the story of the race as it goes by. You can see from the start, the initial breakaway, the chase group, the final breakaway, and then coming into the final. You can see who's where, and you know, it makes sense if you're a cyclist to look at these images. It gives you a sort of race report, and that was important in this particular shoot. Now, going forward, I'm obviously not gonna be shooting very much at the moment. I'm not gonna be doing the same sorts of videos. I'm only coming into work at the weekends right now because I just can't justify the risk to my family, to myself, for being in a big, busy building during the week. It doesn't make any sense to me. But what I am going to do is this. I'm going to be putting together a marketing package for YouTube free of charge 
and I'm going to do it in individual segments. So the next video that comes out will be how to get your branding together, how to work out who you are. And then from that, we're going to go on how to build your marketing, you know, your marketing media, your packages. And then from this, we're going to go through all the different phases of marketing on a week by week basis. Hopefully this gives you something to do whilst you're also on lockdown. And if not, maybe it's interesting. If you did enjoy this video, do hit like and subscribe. If you're looking for those future videos, I'm going to put them up so you can see when they're going to premiere and then you'll be able to tune in at the right time to see those. I hope everyone's staying safe and well and I'll see you all next time.